Welcome back to WordPress widgets front to back. If you've been following along with the course this far, then you have a completely working WordPress widget where you're able to specify your name and save it. Unfortunately, we're not able to actually display the content of the widget on the front end of the site yet. Additionally, we have some other things that we need to discuss before building on top of the widget, namely data sanitization. Specifically, we need to handle the case when data is being written to the WordPress database and retrieved from the WordPress database. And so in this screencast, we're gonna take a look at several helper functions that allow us to do just that. So assuming that you have your development environment up and running, let's go ahead and open up your IDE. And then let's take a look at the update function. Specifically, this is where we're taking the value of the new instance of the widget, we're setting it equal to the old instance so that we can update it, and then we're saving it to the database. Notice right now that if you were to hop over to your browser, navigate to the widgets page, and specifically to front to back, you can actually insert JavaScript code into the settings field. This obviously causes some problems. Aside from simply breaking the UI, it makes our database susceptible to malicious scripts, be it for messing up the database, perhaps for assigning some malicious client side code that would cause the user's browser to behave erratically, Whatever the case may be, we need to be able to handle this case. So let's delete the widget and drag a fresh instance over. Now return to your IDE. And then what we want to do here is first make a call to strip slashes. First, if users have provided slashes such as backslash quote or double backslashes, uh, they will be handled properly. And these characters are used a lot in HTML, JavaScript, and other programming languages. So we want to be able to strip them properly. Next, we want to make a call to strip tags. And we'll just wrap the strip slashes function with that because it returns a string anyway. Strip tags will strip any HTML or PHP tags from the return string. This is the first step in sanitizing data as you're preventing it from being saved into the database like this. So let's return to the browser. And let's try to add our JavaScript again. So we'll say script type is text slash JavaScript. And then let's add uh, our alert box back that says, hello world. And we'll close the script. We'll click save. And notice now we're left with alert hello world, which that is not malicious at all. It's just another string. So let's go ahead and empty this out and click save. The next thing we need to do is to hop back into the IDE and then load up the admin view. At this point, we're currently echoing the value of the input field in its rawest form. WordPress provides a helper function that will allow us to add a greater level of security. The function name is escape attribute or esc underscore ATTR for short. And this particular function is responsible for encoding uh, carrots, ampersands, quotes, things like that. It's very useful when escaping HTML attributes and is specifically useful in form information. So let's save, let's return back to our browser. And let's try to add some HTML now. Let's say strong Tom McFarlane. And then uh, let's add um, a paragraph tag and then let's add a span, we'll say, this is, this is a header, we'll close the span, we'll close the paragraph tag, we'll save, and the only thing that's left is Tom McFarlane, and this is a header. This is how you do basic data sanitization in WordPress. And this is key because as we continue to go forward with the rest of this series, I'll be writing these functions implicitly without necessarily describing them as they've been covered in this screencast. Additionally, I'll be providing some links in the show notes that talk about WordPress security and some things that you can be mindful of as you begin to get more advanced in your development. In the next screencast, we're gonna get back to adding elements to the dashboard. Specifically, we're gonna be adding a text area that allows the users to define a short biography. After that, we'll then begin to write some JavaScript that enforces constraints on our users so that they can't necessarily populate a 250 word biography and instead we'll force them to use only say 140 words or 160 words. At any rate, I'm looking forward to it and I can't wait to see you in the next screencast.